<laughs> All right, turn in your Bible to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Uh, I was going to announce Sunday, and I forgot to announce, but uh, the 20th of November, the Warren family will be with us on Sunday morning to sing. So I've down know. three things. I'm just going to give these to you tonight. We'll look at them in the days ahead. I want to set the stage for it tonight. But I want to give you these three things. If you've got a passion, if you want to be a success in the Christian life, do three things. Now, I understand that really it's not a formula. It's really not a one, two, three step. It's a process. It's a lifestyle. But we can just sort of think about it better if we put it down in pegs like this. Number one. Set up a plan. Set up a plan. If you don't know where you're going, no wind is the right wind. Set up a plan. Do you have a plan? Do you have a plan for tomorrow? Do you have a plan for the rest of this year? Do you have a plan for your marriage? Do you have a plan for your children? Do you have a plan for... Where you're going in five years, a short-term plan, long-term plan. You see, there is a good thing about this, this Christian life. You can have a long-term goal, but then you can have short-term goals that will help you get to your long-term goals. Set up a plan. I learned that early in life. Number two, stay in the Word. Stay in the Word in the Word. Now, you can listen to a lot of Christian psychologists or worldly psychologists, and they'll give you this, that, and the other thing. And there's some good uh, in that. There, there's some good in that. There's some good things uh, that, that can be said. Uh, I try to read uh, from Zig Ziglar uh, and some other men uh, that are motivational speakers, and they have a lot of good things to say. And a lot of things they say are very biblical. But the Bible has the answer. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And so get in the word. Just today. I've told you that I do this every day. The first, time, the first thing I do when I get in my study. I've already done my praying. But the first thing I do when I get into my study, I'm reading through the book of Joshua again because I'm speaking on it. I'll read three chapters in, my, in the Old Testament. I'm in Psalms. I'm getting ready to finish Psalms. I read three chapters in the New Testament, and I'm just about to the middle of Revelation. I'll complete the New Testament. And I'm in the end of the Psalms in the Old Testament. Now I'll finish up the Psalms. Now I'll go back to Matthew and start all over again. I want to read it through as many times as I can before I die. I just want the Word in my life. I've been praying about two things. I've been asking the Lord for guidance in a couple of things. And uh, I got in the, the Psalms today and I got to that third chapter. And there it was. It just, the Holy Spirit just said, there it is. There's your answer right there. That's it. That's what I want you to do. That's what you need. It's right there. At the right time, the right day, right place, the Lord said to me just what I needed. And my day has been wonderful because the Lord spoke to me and gave me an answer. Now, you will not find an answer for your life that's real valid unless you stay in the Word. Get you a plan, a plan for your life, a plan for your family, a, a plan for your children. And then the third thing, step out on faith. Step out on faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Get that? Faith is the substance, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What, is, what, is he, what does he mean by that? You'll never see the fruit of your labors. You'll never have success unless it begins with faith. It's got to begin with faith. A 
lot of times the Lord will give you a plan, but he won't give you a lot of particulars. He didn't do that to Abraham. What did he say to Abraham? Leave. Leave your home. Leave everybody behind. Go to a land that I will show you. And so the Bible said Abraham left and journeyed. That's what it says. But step by step, step by step, step by step, what happened? Abraham knew that if he had faith, that God would complete his faith. Now get this picture. I know we're in Joshua, but get this picture. Get through all of the particulars, and here comes a time in Abraham's life where God has given him a son in his old age. And God has said, this is the heir. This is the one that begins the line that's going to bring the Messiah into the world. Jesus is going to come into the world through this line. And now God comes to Josh or to uh, uh, Abraham and says, take your son, take him out in the wilderness, and sacrifice him. But Lord, he's the heir. You mean we're going to have more children? How's this going to work, Lord? See, he had already found out that the substitute didn't work. Well, Lord, but you know what happened? Abraham had developed and learned to walk by faith. And so Abraham says, that's what you want me to do, Lord. I'll do it. Now, did you notice something? God didn't stop this movement as they got off of their donkey, as they walk up in the mountain to find a place of sacrifice. It didn't stop there. He didn't stop when Isaac was laid on the altar. It was not until Abraham raised the knife and was about ready to bring it down that God said, hold it. Remember what, John, what Abraham said to his son? Isaac, God will provide for himself a sacrifice. And God said, Abraham, look in the bush, and there's a lamb there. You sacrifice that lamb. Now, what was that? Faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Or faith is what we hope for. It's the evidence of things not seen. You need faith tonight. I need faith tonight. And you say, I don't see a thing. I don't see a thing. It's terrible. It's messed up. I don't. I, what? Well, you can either give up and quit, or you can go with God and have the victory that He promises. Now, I want to show you something tonight out of Joshua that fits all of this. Have a plan. Get in the Word and live by faith. Have a plan. Get in the Word, live by faith. That's exactly what happened to Joshua. Those three things in his life gave him the success that he needed. Now, Joshua is the Ephesians of the Old Testament. Get that now. Joshua is the Ephesians of the Old Testament. What's Ephesians about? Claiming your inheritance. That's what it's about. Claiming what God has promised you. That's what it's about. All right. Moses could not lead the children of Israel into the promised land. Why? Because he represented the law. The law can only tell you what's wrong. The law is a schoolmaster to lead us to Christ. Moses was a great man and all of that, but he could not lead the children of Israel into the promised land. Now, now think with, with me, though. Think with me now. In the promised land, it does not, the promised land doesn't represent heaven. Because once they got into the promised land, there was battles. There's not going to be any battles in heaven. Now, it does represent 
the fact that one day God is going to keep his promise to Abraham and give him all the land that was promised him. Now, that will take place in the millennium. In the millennium, and I'll show you this if we've got time tonight out of Ezekiel, that God's going to give them all of the land that he promised them. But that will be in the millennium. Remember now what we said last Sunday? The rapture will take place. There will be seven years tribulation here on the earth. At the end of that, we come back to the earth with the Lord Jesus Christ. He destroys his enemies. He sets up a thousand years reign on the earth. The curse is lifted. The desert's going to bloom like a rose. It's going to be a utopia. And God's going to rule and reign from Jerusalem over his people, the nation of Israel, and we're going to rule and reign with him for a thousand years. At the end of the thousand years, Satan will be loose for a little season. He'll destroy him. He'll chain him with a chain, put him in the abyss, and we'll never hear of him and see of him again. Hallelujah. You'll never cry anymore. You'll never have battles anymore. There'll never be any more losses anymore. Heaven will be everything God has promised. I can't wait, but I'll have to stay faithful until that time comes. Now, here's where we are in Joshua. Look in verse 1. Now, after the death of Moses, a servant of the Lord, it came to pass. I like that phrase, it came to pass. Things come to pass. Things come to pass. I never thought I'd get out of college. Never thought I'd get out of college. When in the world will I walk across that stage and get my degree? When will I be able to put on that frock with three stripes on it and walk across the stage? I thought it would take forever, but it came to pass. Huh? It came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua. Who is Joshua? Joshua is Savior. That's what it means. The son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Get up. Joshua, I want you to get up. God's going to give him a plan. God's going to give him a plan. He's going to get in the Word and listen to the Word. He's going to have faith, and he'll see the victory. But that takes time. That takes time. Now, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even the children of Israel. Now, now look at this verse. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and under the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. God said, I'm going to give you all of it. It is yours. Go take it. Now, how is he going to get that? Have a plan. Get in the word. Live by faith. That's how the children of Israel were going to possess the land. All right, now wait, listen. It was there for the taking. God had promised it to them. And we're going to see later on that they did not possess all the land because they didn't believe God. And they rebelled, him against, uh, rebelled against him. And 40,000 of them died in the wilderness. Their carcasses died in the wilderness. They didn't go in to the land of promise. They didn't possess it all because they disobeyed God. God wants you and I to go in to the land of victory. Now remember, Canaan represents victory in the, li in the life of a Christian. Victory. He wants us to have complete victory. And we can have victory if we have a plan. If we get in the Word. If we walk by faith. Now look in verse 5. There shall not... Any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Isn't that a great promise? 
Now, God said that to Joshua. He didn't say that to me, and he didn't say that to you, but this is for you and for me. Joshua, the book of Joshua was written to Joshua, said to Joshua, but it's written for us. We can claim the promises just like he did, okay? And so the Lord's not going to fail us. He's not going to forsake us. What are you going through right now? He won't forsake you. Now, I'm not going to take time to read the rest of this, but I want to call your attention to some words. Watch your Bible now. Look in verse 7 and notice the word strong, and this, notice the word very courageous. Then in that same verse, look at the phrase, all the law, all the law. Then look at the word prosper, prosper. Look at verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Get in the book. Then look at the word observe. Observe to do according to all that is written therein. You can't just pick and choose what you like in the Bible. You have to accept all of it. Try to live all of it out. Look at the word prosperous in verse 8. Make thy way prosperous. Look at the word success. You'll have good success. Look at verse 9 and look at the word strong and look at the word good courage. Look at the, in verse 11, at the word command. And then up in verse 13, look at the word remember the word. Remember the word. Verse 16, the word commandest. In verse 17, we will hearken unto thee. In verse 18, look at the word rebel against thy commandment. And then in verse 18 again is the word strong and the word courage. Do you get the idea that God's trying to say something to Joshua and the children of Israel? If you're going to possess the land, you're going to have to believe the word, you're going to have to be strong, and you're going to have to be very courageous. Now hear me. God said to Joshua, you tell the people, to, we're going to go in the land. We're going to possess it, and I've given it all to you. But as you go through, you're going to discover that they found out that when they got there, Joshua was going to give them their portion of the land, but they had to go in and take it. God wasn't going to wipe the enemy out for them. They were going to have to go out in and defeat the enemy. Are you listening? I hear so many Christians whimper and why and, 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 and oh, all of this and, and all of this and all of this is befallen up on me and, and I can't have no victory and I can't have... It takes courage. It takes courage. Where do you get courage? You have a plan, God's plan. You get in the Word, it directs you. You have faith. And so he said, look, I'm going to take you in, and you're going to have victory, but you're going to have to go in, and you are going to have to possess the land. What giant are you fighting today? Now, some Christians... Not me. Not me. No, not me. I'm afraid of it. I, I, I'll just sit around. I'll just, I just dilly-dally around. Well, you can do that. You can do that. But you'll be sorry at the judgment seat of Christ. Now, I want you to go back to uh, the book of Deuteronomy. And I want you to look at chapter... 11 verse 24 Deuteronomy chapter 11 actually let's read verse 22 down through verse 24 look at what is said here in the book of Deuteronomy for if you shall diligently keep all these commandments which I command you to do them to love the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to cleave unto him. 
Then will the Lord drive out all the nations from before you, and you shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Every place thereon that the sole of your feet shall tread shall be yours, from this wilderness and Lebanon, from the river to the river Euphrates, even under the uttermost sea shall be your coast. Did you get that? That's the promise that God gave. But look at what he said. If you shall diligently keep all of these commandments. Let me, say this, let me stop and say this to you and I as an individual. And then let me say this to us as a church. I have a passion. I have a passion. I don't think God led me here as your pastor for me to fail. And I don't believe he led me here for us to fail. I believe he led me here so you and I work together. And that we've got to work together. We've got to work together. I'm not perfect, and I'll fail you. And if I do, I'll, if I, and it, it, call me out, I'll, I'll apologize to you. Because I'm human. But I have a passion. I want God to bless this church. I want, listen, I want us to possess all the land that God wants to give us. Now, obviously, you know we're not talking about acres. We're not talking about that. We're talking about spiritual land, spiritual victories. You know this, some of you that's been here a long time. There was every space in that parking lot out there full on Sunday morning. People had to park in the ball field. And we were getting ready. Well, we did more than getting ready. We had contractors to come in and draw up plans for a new building. And what we were planning with God's help was to build a building that would start out with seating 400 people. But the building was constructed so that we could move back, move back, move back to eventually seat 700. And we were going to leave this facility here and use it for youth and so forth and so on. And we were going to build the church out there right by the road so it could be seen visibly. And I'm not going to go into anything else but to simply say, apparently, I'm not even going to say uh, we didn't do it. But wouldn't you like to see something like that happen if it's God's will? Now, let me stop and say this. I'm not into numbers for the sake of numbers. If God wants us to have 150, I'm, satis I'm, I'm satisfied with what he wants. But, you know, if we get to 150, we ought to say, Lord, do you want to go to 200? And, you know, we can't really... You know, we, we can't really say we want this just for numbers. However, if you look at it like this, numbers represent souls for whom Christ died. Okay. Preacher, how are we going to get to that level? Well, I can't do it myself. The deacons and I can't do it. All of us have got to do it. Okay. Well, preacher, what are you asking of me? And I know I'm deviating away a little bit, but that's okay. We're family. What I'm asking you to do is to ask God to help you love souls. I want you to ask God to give you a broken heart for souls. I was meeting someone for lunch today at 11, and he thought it was 11.30, and of course I was right. <laughs> And so he said, I'll be there just, I love deacons. They just sit around and go, back where you want. No. <laughs> and so he said, I'll be there in just a few moments. And so while I was waiting for him to come, uh, I just walked up and down the parking lot putting tracks on the cars. I had a number of them with me, and so I just put them on the cars. You say, well, people just throw them away. Yeah, they may. But if one person reads it and gets saved, it's okay. Amen? It's okay. Now, 
I may never know the result of that until I get to heaven. I don't care. Since I've been here, I've, I've knocked on, and, and I'm not bragging, but I've knocked on hundreds of doors all around here. And I've had all kinds of reactions. Mark can attest to that. We're atheists. We're Catholic. As if that's supposed to flip me backwards or something. <laughs> or just not come to the door. There's that crowd again, those three right, at, right in there causing trouble. <laughs> but, listen, that's okay. That's okay. Every once in a while, somebody will come to the door like that young couple did right back there and said, we're looking for a church. And they were here Sunday morning, Sunday night, and they're back again tonight. And I'm glad that they're here. And they, had a, they said they told me they had a, a real good welcome Sunday morning. And that's the way it ought to be. Amen? Talk to Tom about a good welcome from this church when he came in the doors for the first time. Larry Dubois, Dubois lived right up from him. And uh, they would sit outside and drink and play rock music. And we lived right up the street. And uh, Sue just befriended her. And every time we'd go by, we just would talk to them and invite them to church. And for about six months or a year, was it, Sue? They didn't come. Finally, one morning here, they walked in sitting down. Came forward and got saved, got right with the Lord, and Larry's still serving God up in Ohio, I think. No, where is it? West Virginia? Somewhere up there. They wanted to come for homecoming, but they couldn't, and they're going to try to come uh, uh, later on. I'm just using those illustrations to say, you never know. Now, I don't expect you to know theology the way I do. You don't need to. I don't expect you to be able to quote verses like I can. I've been at it a long time. But you know what you can do? You know what you can do? Hey, neighbor, come to church with me Sunday morning. Here's a track. Can you say this? Listen to me now. Can you say this? Let me look at George and say this. George, where are you in your spiritual journey? Can you say that? And all that does is open up a conversation. Or the classic one is this. Sir, if you died today, where would you go? Now you might come back to me and you may say, but you know, I don't know all these plans of salvation. I don't know all of that. I... All right, let me ask you this. Do you know John 3.16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That verse right there. You can give your testimony. I'm saying to you tonight, there's land to be possessed. And I want our church to possess the land. We want to go into the land. There's going to... What, what, and I'm not, I didn't get to it tonight, and I'm going to show this to you next week, God willing. When they got into the land, I'm going to show you where Joshua got the people together. And tribe by tribe, he said, your possession is here. Your possession is here. Your possession is there. But then he said to them, go possess it. That's what he said. I'm not going to go out and fight for you. You go out and fight and get it. And then one group, God gave them a place where there were hills and trees. And they wanted that. They wanted trees to build their own houses and so forth and so on. But they said to Joshua, that's the land of the giants. The giants are there. Every place that God wants us to possess, there will be giants. Journey Baptist Church has made a decision to support missions. And I thank you for being faithful to it. Tom told me, that our missions giving is there, and we can take on more missionaries. And by the way, let me just say this while you're here, and I'll dismiss you because it's about it's 8 o'clock. I'll dismiss you, but let me say this. Praying about this thing as your pastor, I'd like for us, Brother John will be here Sunday, I'd like for us to pray about taking his ministry on 
starting churches. He does a great job, John does. And John is an evan- is, has an evangelistic, and he has a gift of evangelism, John does. And John will go up north or out west, and he'll take a young preacher that he's trained, help him start a church. I'd like to see us take him on. And then in January, we're going to have our big missions conference, and that'll be like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then what we usually do on Saturday night is we have a... Uh, and I never can remember what, what it's called, but you have a, uh, one family will bring a, a plate from Japan. One will bring a plate from India. Uh, Christine could bring one from India. She's good at that, uh, bringing Indian food in and so forth. And then we have a great time with the missionaries. And then on Sunday, we'll have our big roundup, and we'll take our faith promise for the coming year. And then I'd like to take on Brother John and he'll have one uh, church planner with him that I think is going to Montana to start a church. Then that'll be it until the summer, and we'll have a mini missions conference. And that gives us a chance to see how much money we have, how much we have in reserve, and then we'll have a mini conference. That'll be just one Sunday. That'll be in June probably. And uh, that works. That's worked for me everywhere I've gone. It worked here. It's worked at wherever I've gone. And God has blessed it. And God blesses it because it's his plan. It's his plan. And listen, if it's his plan, it'll work. Pray for me. Pray for each other. Let's pray God will give us unity, a vision, a purpose to live for, a passion, but I'm saying this, because we'll have that, the devil's going to say, oh, no, no, no. You're not going to reach the world. You're not going to reach this. I don't want to see people say the devil hates it. And he'll hate you. But, folk, let's stay steady. Let's stay faithful. Pray that Journey Baptist Church will increase in love, in faith, and in holiness. Uh, by the way, uh, can I tell you a secret? I'm not perfect, but neither are you. You're not either. All right, you- let's stand, please. <laughs> let's stand, please, and we'll be dismissed.